Man, uh, great win on, when did we play? Saturday night. Um, really, really fun in front of a great crowd. Homecoming, um, having one of our former teams, one of the first WAC championship teams come back. And um, again, our students were amazing, so just an electric college, at college atmosphere and a really good game. Really impressed with the way Tanner uh, played. Um, uh, Tanner, our protection and our receivers, I thought did a nice job. Turnovers defensively and then a key field goal by Trevor Sampson. So a lot of things positive uh, from the game. And a short week, so we're already deeply immersed into Cincinnati and looking forward to the upcoming game. So what questions can I answer? What's Tanner's status? Tanner's status is probable um, at this point. Is it just a hamstring? It is. Yeah. How much does that change your preparation this week if you might need Bo? Um, just Bo will be with the, with our offense the entire week and just in case and getting as grouped in as, as many reps as he possibly can um, around whatever Tanner gets to try to make sure they're both ready. What do you say are some of Bo's strengths? We haven't seen him as much, obviously, as you have. Man, if you, if you go back and watch his high school film, ability to create, he runs really well, and he does throw it well as well. So um, more of um, probably Taysom, Taysom type offense if Bo is in, maybe less Tanner. Um, but again, we have to customize the offense for Tanner predominantly, so there's a limited package we could do um, with Bo. Uh, it just has to be enough with enough compliments to be able to, to make sure we can move the ball successfully. Um, but he's a different style of quarterback, but really effective. We like him a lot. Does does uh, Bo stay part time scout team, or does that yeah. who no. who does that fall on now? Uh, Coy Coy Detmer is the one that uh, has been handling um, the other share of that, and so Coy will and we like Coy a lot too. But he'll be predominantly with us, as or exclusively with us. As far as Tanner being probable, one of the things he's done this year is showing some mobility <laughs> in the pocket. Does that change if he's hampered it, by that? Yeah, it might. Um, so we'll, we'll have to plan on him probably being less mobile, try to build the plan around that. If he happens to be more than that, that would be just a, a bonus. But I think it's better if we planned where he'd be less mobile than more. You had a couple of guys you mentioned were suspended mm. on the defensive back. You're going to have everybody back for yeah, this game. Yeah, they'll be back. And we uh, finally, we think, we'll get Harvey Longy back as well. So Travis Tuiloma came in. He got about 20 plays. and just was dominant when he was in there. We kept him out quite a bit because of the amount of nickel we were playing. But Travis will play more and going forward. We think we'll get Harvey back. And then our secondary, uh, Micah Hanneman, went out of the game with an injury. We think we'll have him back, plus our other two players. But we love well the stars. We expect him to be back also, probable. I would put he and Tanner in kind of the same category. category. That's easy. Um, Speaking about Cincinnati, they're really skilled, a very similar opponent to what we just played, uh, maybe even a little bit more explosive, um, but similar similar caliber, similar type of athletes. Um, I would compare them, uh, uh, well, in the game we just got done watching, I'd compare them to Memphis uh, in the bowl game that we played last year. So they, I just got done watching that game, and it was 53-46. Um, so they're, they're two similar styles, similar athletes, similar type of programs. Um, so, yeah, it'll be a great, great college football game and a, a really good test. Another week with two quarterbacks possibly having to prepare for them. How similar are they? Does it, is there a little bit different things you'll have to do for either one? No, we're, uh, I think they're similar enough and the offense is similar enough where uh, there won't be significant change on our part. Midway through the season, do you feel like you have a, a good feel of the identity of this, this team now? Yeah, I think that their, man, their chemistry is really strong. They think they can win uh, any game, really at any time. Uh, there has been one exception that caught us all off guard, which is Michigan, uh, which looks a little bit better now based on how they're playing. Um, but uh, they love to play football. They like each other. They want to get better. They're willing to work to get better. And um, so uh, it's a fun team to coach. Has there been any positions that you feel have really improved from where you were in fall camp? No, n none that i just say would be strikingly um, different to say many start to here and now they're here. I think the whole group, the whole team is just gradually plugging along and getting better. What did you learn about the past few times when working with them from the last game? Mm, not much, just playing the ball downfield a little bit better. We had Kainakua a corner, um, which isn't a bad thing. He matched up on their giant tight end twice, and man, the guy made 
two really, really good plays. And we had two other fades, uh, one that um, was caught between coverage in front of Michael Wadsworth, and he hit him hard, and the fade that was caught on Mike Davis. But other than that, we could have matched a little bit better underneath some of our zones. But basically, they had some good players making plays. Um, and quite a few of their yards, and within that 70 point, 17 point drive came there. Better than I thought. In fact, optimistic based on what I saw. Um, but they're a good offense. When they get the ball, he seems to be getting the ball quick out, out quick a lot. What can you do in, in those circumstances? There, there's always different things. It starts first with defensive linemen getting their hands up. Easiest way to defend a pass is not have it get downfield. And then varieties of coverage. You just have to execute it. So the more variety you have, the more execution and the more stress it puts. Um, and we did that really well at times for three quarters um, and kept the points right on the money. And then assignment mistakes and not making plays on the ball in the air in kind of a, in kind of a tight stretch. But again, I, uh, I'm pretty optimistic based on what I saw. What when you, you got the pump blocked, what, what was the breakdown? Um, really, I would say as much as anything, just teaching and education. We changed our, the people on our shield a little bit and hadn't quite um, articulated it well enough to where there was an exact idea for sure on what happened. Um, and so I, I don't think we taught it super well. Um, but it, it wasn't anything that was, I think, our players' fault. I just think we could have taught it better. When it comes to who you put in the shield, now with the rugby style, does, does mobility a big yeah. factor in that now? Mobility is a lot more important. And, and so with that, again, um, the opponent really wasn't even trying to block it. They were just trying to pull it up. And there happened to be kind of a breakdown in our, in our, in our protection. And so there was a growing pain that way to just get um, some transition into shield players and just the communication kind of being lost along the way. Were you pleased with how the shield did Man, on the they did. They did a nice job. And our punt team overall was, was really strong. <coughs> I mean, there's a giant black mark with the punt blocked. But, and overall, it was a good day for our special teams. Since he's the second fastest team in the country, plays per game, those kind of teams don't take you off guard, though, anymore. No, and coming off of what we just faced um, and playing against our offense, there was only two play. There were only two plays against uh, East Carolina where uh, we had one player on the wrong side, and so when you consider that, it just uh, so we know they go fast, and we're as prepared as we can be for it. Generally speaking, your third down defense has been really good this season. Uh, would you care to talk about that particular phase of the game? Yeah, two two things that are uh, that we have done really well defensively, and other parts are catching up. When we get a team to third down, we're we're really good by variety of what we can do. And so uh, we put a lot of pressure and a lot of different looks on our players, which require quite a few assignments. And when they execute them correctly, man, it's, it's, we're really good. And that also has been helpful in creating turnovers. So those two things we're doing really well. Consistency through the length of a game without a big play or an assignment mistake here or there, that's usually leading about one touchdown a game right now. And so once we eliminate that, even in the other game, we would have held our pillar, um, not considering the block punt. So, but that's on third downs. We just don't have to do it as frequency, so our execution has been more exact. Cincinnati hasn't played since October 1st. As a coach, do you prefer the rest or the lack of rust? Yeah, right, right now, a uh, lack of rust. Um, you could argue either way based on the team, uh, but they're fast and watching them. Not only fast tempo-wise, but uh, they look really good on film in terms of receivers, skill, running backs, um, offensive line. And so they might argue the other way. But at this point, man, we're growing and developing and getting better. And I wouldn't want to stop yet, um, at least for our team. A lot of anticipation for Travis Tuivoma coming back. After reviewing the film, how much different did your defense oh, look with him being in the middle of it? It's completely different. Um, so the, when, when he's in the game, Travis and the center are two yards on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And the rest of the defense is back here somewhere, which can be good and bad. Sometimes that creates scenes. but. He's, he's really good, and he'll play a lot more in, in even nickel situations now. He's, I think he's our best defensive player. Of the early look you've had, where would you say Cincinnati's offense kind of fits into the? Oh, man, statistically, they're the best one. You're talking about 600 yards a game and 39 points. So yeah, they're good. Um, so I would say very similar to last week. If possible, they even run higher tempo than that and probably are a little bit deeper at the skilled player's position. Taysom has said he's kind of still weighing his yeah. decision. Are you uh, giving him any input, or are you just letting him? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll let him. Uh, so he and I met maybe a week after um, his injury, and, and there's basically three different directions and options that he can go. And really what, what, where we left it is we'll let the entire season go all the way through the bowl game, let um, 
schooling, job opportunities, NFL assessments, all that happen, get as much information as we can, and then I'll advise him at that point. I'm not going to try to persuade him. I'm just going to be a sounding board and try to help him make a great decision. And that's how I would feel best, and I think it's how he'd feel best too. Bronco, we talk a lot about the players and coaches, of course, but what about the, just a question about the auxiliaries, the guys that keep the stats, the tech support, all the other, you know, main peripheral guys that we don't think about, but how, how important are they to your program? Man, I, I, I love our, um, so if I were to, to say right now, our, our video coordinator, Errol Siever, is, he's phenomenal. Um, love, love, love our uh, football operations guy, and Pat Hickman, our personnel, player personnel director, and Justin Anderson is awesome. And then Mick Hill's been doing equipment forever and ever. Our strength staff now is right on the money. I mean, there's just, and I have an unbelievable personal assistant too. So there's just a lot of really good people here that um, take great care of our players. And I think there's just this um, stability and consistency of the type of people that surround our players. And then you add our nutritionist and Dan Wilcox into that mix. And, and then academically with Jim Hamblin and Trevor Wilson upstairs and Jessica, I mean, it's just everywhere you look. My the idea I have for our program is whatever door you open, there's a fantastic person who's really bright and competent at what they do, and we're closer to that now than we've ever been. Media relations guy. Media relations guy's not bad. That's the, I mean, he's, that's the weak thing. He's he's he's, uh, he's not bad. Yeah. We better end with that. <laughs> Brett, Brett has the hardest job in relation to my personality of any of all, any and all. So he he probably gets double credit. For that. Have you had Thanks. any connections or interactions with uh, Tupperville at all? Yeah, Tommy is uh, he's now the um, the chair of the um, uh, the board of uh, AFC coaches, and so um, when Mac stepped when Mac Brown left, and Tommy took over. So that's my relationship with him. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.